Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today I'm just messing around. I'm actually just playing with the stuff here in my living room. I, the weather outside sucks. Uh, it's raining <laughs> and it's not that warm. But um, it's perfect weather for tingling around with the computer stuff inside. So uh, let's see what I'm up to. This is what I'm playing with or actually it's giving me a lot of trouble. Uh, this is the Netbot 500 and I did a couple of videos on that trying to make it work with power and I haven't changed that power setup yet so this is still what I'm doing. I have uh, two small DC to DC converters and I have a power thing over there that is powering those. So one of those are making 3.3 volts and the other one is making 5 volts and everything is fed into the netbot here. Mm, because the power supply for this thing uh, costs close to 100 US dollars shipped here to me. Um, but I tried different stuff. I thought that maybe I could uh, get access to it. I bought this used on eBay and I have no idea what IP number it runs on password and stuff so I will need to do a factory default on that I was well I tried to put in a network cable here hoping that it would be uh, on the well DHCP server so I, I went over here and I checked if it popped up on my DHCP server it did not so it probably has a static IP number I also tried to install the Snyder slash APC software to um, to see if it would auto um, find that it did not so I read online that then you have to go and try with the serial connection cable here and that's what I'm up to now uh, laptops with the serial connections are getting rare <laughs> so I have dug up my very old Dell. It's a Dell Latitude and it's the 840C. This is an absolutely wonderful laptop back in the days. Now it's um, just old. So right now I've been... Um, this is running Windows XP, which is okay. I don't use this laptop for anything else but this stuff. And I've been installing or updating Java 8 and installing Pachi on this to hopefully make the serial connections to the netbot over here, wallbot. Um, and it just finished. This took hell of a time to install the Yaver 8 on this. I don't know what it has been up to, but well, that took quite a while. I'll see if I can get a connection to that and bring you along. So here on APCs by Snyder Electronics, I have found um, a manual on how to factory default this and this should uh, reset the password. Uh, it should not reset the IP number stuff but I'm hoping that um, getting part of the way and maybe being able to get on there and actually just seeing what the IP number is would be enough so that I could uh, have my normal PC jump on the same network and then with a default password I would be able to change the password VLAN settings and so on. Right now I have no idea where the IP number is at. I also don't know if I'm using the right serial connections. I have a whole box of serial cables back here. That one. I'm hoping that I will have something that will do the job. Let's see if I get a connection. So to connect to the Wallbot 500 through a serial connection you need the data on um, how the wallbot communicates and down here it says that the, the bits per second is 38,400 data bit is 8 partition none stop bit 1 flow control hardware okay potty is a, is a piece of software that is able to communicate with something doing using the com port uh, serial connection and um, first you need to know what com port the computer actually has because those can be numbered very randomly what you do is you go over here computer management 
Now this window is in Danish, so that's a bit of a problem here. But I went in here for device management and this popped up. And I found down here under ports, COM and LPT ports, that it has an LPT port, a printer port, and it also has a communication port. And for this system, it's actually called COM1. So let's see if that works. It probably doesn't, but well, let's give it the benefits of the doubt. Unable to communicate, unable to open serial port. Okay, that's not good. Back in the days, there was something called a serial mouse. And I just found one of those. And right now it's um, trying to install that driver because I wanted to be sure that the, the serial connection was working back there. Well, the mouse works on the on this one. Mm, I'm not, uh, I'll wait and see if it pops up. Okay, uh, after another reboot, the mouse is now working as it should. So uh, that's, uh, so the COM port is working perfectly. Very nice. Okay, I have come a little further. I couldn't remember if Tilnet was able to communicate with COM1. Uh, that didn't work out for me. But I went in and I changed the serial connection to uh, to be using COM2 instead of COM1. And it actually popped out and said that some other program was using the serial connection on COM1. And if I was okay with that and I just said okay and then it actually kind of works so now i've changed it down here to be using com2 and it pops up with a screen and uh, i don't remember what i did last time but there look at that netbots uh, version 2.61 i don't know if that's new or old and now it wants a login we need to find the default password for that. I'll do a Google and be right back. Okay, found the default here. It's just netbot, netbot. So let's pop up the netbot and type that in. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, I did that and it worked a little bit better the next time. Um, but password is incorrect. so. This uh, thing has not the default password, which is probably also a good thing for this thing. Um, you wouldn't want to have one of those hanging around with a default password, but it does not help me. Now I have to uh, proceed with the factory default thing. Oh, did it just, oh, it kicked me. Login terminate after 30, that's probably what happened before. Maybe, let's try it again. There, it's, it's thinking about it, and then it will pop up and say, that's not really what I wanted. Okay. Okay, this is what we're gonna try to uh, restore the appliance to factory default. We have to connect it with a serial modem cable. We already did that. We have to make a serial connection through hyper terminal. Well, um, Hachi will do the job just as good, I hope. Uh, Hyperthermal, that's the one. I, I forgot what the name was of that one. But, and here is the different communication settings for it. And then after you have successfully established a serial connection, I think that's just uh, getting this the login screen. Um, you should power cycle the application. I'm guessing that I'll take the power cable out and put it back in and then it should come and ask me when the message applies hit any key to stop auto boot press that and that will disrupt the, the boot in the netbot prompt type configure reset and press enter and then I have to well then it will it will erase flash memory Write new default configuration and restart automatically. Okay, and then I have to kind of reboot it and try again. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, try that. Okay, I'm connected to it and I am gonna pull the power out. It's out and we're gonna put it back in. It's in. Oh, there it is. That was quick. 
Cool. Okay, it's something to cheaper. Removable hard drive. Okay. Let's just um, try the. Where is it? Config. Reset. Is that correct? Looks like it. Enter. And it's flashing. Oh! It said that I had to. Okay, what they mean is that I have that now I should be able to log in through the the web application, but now I don't have the IP number for it, and that's really what we want to go get. So let's see if uh, let's see if we can log in now. I'm guessing that if we can get in here, we will be able to see the. That doesn't work. Did I write that right? But right. Okay, maybe I have to restart it. Okay, I got a little further down in the text. Someone suggested that, uh, well, some of these netbots has different passwords, and uh, I got in with root and netbot. There's another suggestion with APC and netbot. So, but root and netbot, and I got in on this one. But the normal is netbot netbot. Weird. But I got a little further because, well, it, it kind of just gave me this and it kicked me out again. Time out. Uh, and um, here it says that all the network settings, there is nothing set here. But it also says that DHCP is now enabled. So I should be able to go over to my DHCP server and see what IP number it got. And I think we will do that. Oops, brain fart. I had borrowed the red cable here, which is the network cable for the laptop. So of course it did not get any IP address. So uh, I'll just put it back in and I just rebooted the system. I guess it's gonna see, say bibbidi blop in just a second or two. There we are. And uh, let's, let's see what it says over here then. Oh, it definitely complains about not having an ethernet connection anymore. So let's try and log in up here, root and netbot. There, and now we get an IP number. Okay, uh, yeah, and it gets DSTP and all kind of stuff. So we're in, let's, and of course now, I uh, haven't connected this to wireless, am I? Nope. This laptop is too old to use my wireless network, that sucks. So let's see, number 14. Go, 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 yes. Root netbot. Ah, that didn't do nothing for me. Try netbot, netbot. Oh, and it's filming the ceiling. <laughs> It's alive! Okay. So the web interface password is netbot netbot. Okay. I think we will um, switch to screen capturing instead of camera. Okay, just before we do that, this is, um, I just changed this setup here. So it's uh, kind of hanging, <laughs> hanging around. I uh, mounted it. It seems that uh, the mount for this is the same as a camera mount. So I have this magic arm that is holding it up right now. Uh, I don't like how it, it floats there, but well, right now it's there. So let's uh, let's go to the computer and see what we can do with this. Okay, this is how it looks right now. Uh, the netbot is here. Uh, it's really not sharp, but yeah, I'm guessing I can fix that. It should be able to do a lot better than it could do 30 frames a second. Could do a higher resolution. Uh, oh, there's a lot more of me now. I didn't know that. But of course, it's using a bigger part of the sensor when it's doing this. Hmm. Awesome. Um, it seems to not be using uh, what do you call that? Widescreen. Let's see if we can. If we can get this sharper, oh, I'm not able to do that. I don't know if you can hear me over here, but I'm gonna try. 
Okay, I think I've seen better than this. Let's let's 10 frames per second. Okay. So when you go up into the very high resolution, it's not able to do 30 frames. Yeah. Some of you some of me disappeared, doesn't it? Didn't it? I was further in the picture. Let's see. We can see, we can see this board over here. And we cannot see that board over there now. Okay, I didn't know that. Otherwise, we get the temperature in Fahrenheit. And we get a graph. Uh, we get the div point. Humidity is 58%. Uh, airflow is 25 feet per minute. Uh, that's windy, isn't it? Uh, audio one. I don't know if it's actually recording the audio. I've probably been messing with it right here. So maybe we could go and see if I can make some some audio happen. Uh, it didn't show up right away. That's for sure. I don't know how often it updates this, but not often enough. Setup mm, about uh, okay. All this, this is. I think it's pretty old. Uh, it set 2007 in there. Service date had 2003, so it might be even older than that. I did. Well, we could just check this out we have the camera here which of course we just was at then we have alerts right now we have an alert because of uh, humidity is too high okay so there is an there's a value for that somewhere humidity 56 percent too high we have some maps hmm. apparently we need some premium software module to get that, we have some graphs like the temperature here, which is there 74.1 degrees. Okay, we have the setup where you can't really set much up, and we have the about. But it's really great for well, there's a alert tab here, and there's the LED part itself, then there is the camera part. Uh, no motion detection right now. We could go in and set that we wanted an alert uh, when there is motion detection, but you need software to set that up. Microphone is connected. External mic connected. Oh, that's I plugged that in. We mm, we could go take that out. Okay, I removed the external mic, which was not an external mic, but more like a dummy thing that was connected. So now it's not connected, it connected, it detected that. So we could go back to the part here, and maybe the audio is different now. Wonder if that's my clapping over here. That could be the clapping. And then now it's detecting audio. Um, but why would it be detecting? Oh, okay. So there is an audio right there and there is an external mic right there. So you have both of them. Wonder if that's correct. Speakers. Funny. Okay. Let's go back and graphs. Let's see. Audio. Yeah, me clapping again. So it is detecting audio, which is it's really great for uh, in a data center. If there's not supposed to be any sound and there is suddenly a lot of sound, something is wrong, right? So not a bad thing. 
Mm, I do believe I have some external mics that I could connect to it. That would be nice. Uh, view camera, view advanced view. Okay. View camera. And it just switches back to camera. Uh, the colors are not that great. So but <laughs> you can kind of see my video setup here. I have one camera here and I have one camera here. And I can with this OBS, I can sh switch. You can you can see me. This is the the this is this camera. I just wait that one, and we can go wide. And that's the other that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of fun. Okay, let's go back to the screen and minimize that. There is not much more we can do here without the software. So I went ahead and I found the software. It's right here. It's advanced view 4.54. And I said that I tried to install that in hopes that it would be able to find the netbots on the network. Uh, it did not, but I installed it. So it's right over here. I'm starting it. Rich. Let's get rid of that. Here we are, APC, Snyder. And we could try and punch in the IP number. That one, uh, auto log off after 10 minutes. Okay. Do you want a password? Here, yeah, you do. There we are. Cool. Little, little, little. What do you say? Registrate your device at mm, later. Okay, what do we have here? Get, getting started. All kind of good stuff. Okay, this is kind of um, a configuration wizard. So I think we should try and do this. Um, let's see. We start the netbots and we don't show this next. Uh, we have to give it a domain and an IP number. Uh, I'm not very happy about the IP number that it has right now, so we're just gonna give it something else. The host names kind of sucks too. Uh, so let's put it in my playhouse domain. Myplayhouse.dk. And the IP number that it would. Oh, it. It gets those from DHGP, that's cool. Next, that one is actually, it's, it's actually not, never mind, it will work. There might be an NTP server called that. I think we will just get the Danish time. Denmark, let's just get the main one, that one. Borrow that. That was it here. Okay. Dude, yes. Oh, and it changed it back. How rude. I guess it's okay. Never mind. Next. Uh, location, I am in Denmark, Denmark, where do you hide, there, and the time zone, that would have been really smart if it has suggested the time zone uh, on, on where I am, because, yeah, and we use 24 hours, next, um, what is that? Set up. Oh, of course. My plan is rebooting. Trying to reconnect. Hm, why is it booting? That's a bit weird. Uh, apparently, it's still moving back here. Can you see that? My hand is moving. Hmm. Oh, and it. Username. Redbot user. So I can set a new password. Or can I? Probably. Okay, we'll keep the passwords for now. SMTP server. Uh, we're not gonna set that up yet. 
Next. Mm, enter test email. Come on. Uh, install Ballware upgrades. What could that be? Let's see what it prompts me. Oh, it disconnected now. But where version? Okay, it's boring right now. We'll get back when it's actually doing something. Okay, let's see. Let's get that one. It um, connected again here. And okay, uh, what it really did was it updated the firmware. Uh, that is really awesome. And I found that out by actually checking here in the web interface under the About tab. Before it was version 2.6.1, now it's version 2.6.2. .2. It's still from back in 2007, which is very old, but it's definitely newer. So uh, that's the thing. Uh, I really want to go see if there's anything newer available. So do we have that? This is just the software. Could we maybe find some some firmware? Let's let's do a search. Okay, it seems that I'm on the latest firmware now, so let's um, let's go back. Proxy, don't need that. Check botware version. You was not able to contact her. Uh, available. Okay. Uh, but it did it anyway. You're finished. Okay. So let's see where we are at here. This is the advanced software for controlling this, which is the advanced view 4.5.4. So here we can do a lot of stuff. There is multiple buttons to press and email servers and external storage and um, alerts alert action what what should we do when there is an alert uh, it can send an email it can send an sms oh can it do that no it can send data to an ftp server email snmp trap http post uh, and oh, send short message. Okay, it can kind of do that, but it does not have the email. But it does not really have an SMS gateway itself. So okay, somewhere we set up the alert profile default. Let's edit that, and let's call it my playhouse. My playhouse. And there is different levels of alerts. There is continuous alert, first alert level, second alert level, third alert level. Um, and this is what what do we do when when the alert is just has just come out? We do this. It's like first level, second level, and third level of support. If nobody response on the first one it will go to the next one so you could kind of configure this that uh, the technician is notified at, at first if he doesn't respond it goes on to the second level of uh, technicians and then it goes to some boss hmm. I don't know if anybody wants that but let's go to the first alert level and edit that and this is what can happen first level start after zero he gets it right away repeats two times interval five minutes um, and it can it can send different stuff along graphs if required um, is it's always nice always capture if requested let's just send those along and pictures always and maps we don't have that so and we would like an email notification primary I 
email and okay okay so now I've created that I need to set the alerts um, when it's supposed to give me an alert is it in here no that's this is where I can set up the, the email notification primary I'm email uh, edit and I can put in I email addresses for the people that should have a notification if something goes wrong well as we can see here there's a, an alert going on here it's just an alert right there and down here we can see what it actually is it's the humidity that is giving out an alert um, the humidity right here it says that humidity is 54 percent so it's probably a bit high which is really unusual it's normally so dry here but it's peaking out and giving an alert about 56 7 um, percent humidity so we're gonna try and change that alert uh, to uh, not have it giving out alerts and to stop it from giving out alerts there is a camera port here and there is a sensor port because um, well it's divided into more stuff so it's the sensor port that is uh, actually giving alerts so we'll go in there and we can see that the we have the wall bot here we have a sensor port and that's kind of, it's attached to the wall bot so if we go in here double click on that one we can see the different stuff that it's uh, set up to remember um, I would like to remember stuff longer than eight hours so if we can um, airflow let's see how far we can go we can go as far as one day okay also audio we will go one day and we'll just set all of them to one day humidity also one day and temperature very important to set that to one day okay that's cool then we'll pick the humidity here and down here we have the default so if we press that we can see that it will complain if the humidity becomes under 20 percent and it will complain if it becomes over 50 so we will try and change that right now it's reading 58 which it's a bit high it might be a sensor error i don't know it might be that i've been spitting at it or actually it has been sitting in the car uh maybe it needs to dry up or something but right now it's it's irritating so we'll set this to let's say 50 65 like that press ok ok and we should stop getting alerts and we did everything became green up here let's see the web interface as well if that became green everything is green over here now everything oh it had an alert so let's go see alerts there uh, the hue value of humidity was too high was now returned to normal yeah we changed normal <laughs> but well that worked for us as well um what i really want is also for the camera to uh, activate if something weird happens so let's see if we can figure that out that would probably be the camera pot over here so let's see settings for that here we have the camera pot um, let's give it a better name that's a good name pot label <laughs> unplugged alert sensitivity i would like it to actually enable audio from camera yes interactive frame rate limit 100 okay so how many frames per second that's probably okay advanced schedule so we can enable the camera at specific times that would be nice I could uh, kind of disable the camera while I'm here 
and have it like give off alerts if something happens when I'm not supposed to be here. Hmm. Nice. Oh, there is so many things to 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 tamper with here. Okay, capture brightness, gamma contrast. See the picture there. And when we change the brightness of this, it's just one apply, and it becomes a whole lot darker. So two. It was at one point seven something. So we're just gonna put it back to that. One point eight. Apply. <laughs> Probably okay. Color auto detect custom fluorescent. Mm, auto detect. So camera capture data. We want it to capture high, and we want it to capture ten frames per second when it does that. Normal quality, mm, high quality. How many seconds post alert? So how many seconds before? 10 seconds pre-alert limit time so how many seconds after the alert has gone off mm. let's record like 260 seconds that's a minute a delay time before capture zero include audio thank you audio volume 50 mm. okay capture Maximum allowed capture is eight kilobytes. Oh, eight megabytes. That's not a lot. Maximum allowed pre. I'm getting into a lot of trouble there. Normal quality. So, okay. What if we do five seconds before the alert and ten seconds after the alert? Do you say? It definitely became smaller. Smaller. Less frames per second. Eight. Total picture count. Okay. Now we are under there. The pre alert is still too high. Oh, that's... It's that one. Oh, oh, I'm getting this one. The pre-alert is how many seconds before uh, the alert went off. <laughs> okay, two seconds we can do. And this one we can go up a little bit. To about... There, too much. Hmm. That's not a lot. Five frames per second. Um, mm. Okay, I need some more stories in this thing, that's for sure. Okay, let's do that. So, camera motion. This is more things that it can trigger on. So, right now, the camera motion is not active. Door swing, door switch is not active either it has a, a little contact it's like a mini jack port on top of the device that's able to do that external mic also a nice thing and speakers um, I have no idea how that works but maybe you can put out an alert I want to see that actually what can we do there Speakers default, not connected, alert state connected. Hmm. It would be cool if it could actually say something, that would be nice. Let's go to the camera, I would like to save those, save that. For 8 hours, 1 day is max. Camera motion, ok. And let's configure that. So we will motion detection yes enable um, 
advanced return to normal delay advanced schedule so we could that's kind of where I can activate and deactivate when I want this to happen well I'm here doing the weekends so I wanted to to give out alerts when I'm here so let's nah, let's not play with this yet nope. uh, motion detected so let's see alert there was a motion detected here okay so it's saved 80 frames let's play that and see what happened I moved okay it's picky so if we go in and see how did I do that uh, here there camera motion capture there we are it okay pre records two seconds right so and that's five frames per second so there must be something happened at the 10th or 11th picture so let's see that step back I knocked my head did that really activate the netbot that's it's picky okay cool oh <laughs> every time I move it <laughs> it's I get another alert okay let's see how many alerts I've already gotten alerts yeah it has already alerted me of um, movement this many times eight times and nine with the humidity stuff down here yeah I move something on the screen and it's did the same okay it's definitely working the picture is not very good but well I think um, I think this video is quite long enough so I think we will stop it here well, we actually got a lot further on this project than I had anticipated. I thought that I was gonna be battling this a lot longer. Well, we got through to it. This became way too long. I'm sure it can be cut down to something that is more watchable. And, I, um, and I'll go put this in the data center. I need to uh, find a box to put the power supply in because that's just hanging and dangling there and it's, it's not that great. Uh, the way that it is right now. I have plans that I want to get some alerts when something is going on in my data center but another option would be to might be something that I could put up on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye!